When you come in, be sure to sign in. The student needs to sign in, and you also will need one of these green papers, okay? Necesito uno de esos. We have enough for the student and their sponsor or parent. Okay, 
So we have enough of these. Tenemos bastante de estos. Sí, para todos aquí. Sí, yo got this. Okay. Everybody have one? Todos tienen uno? We already have one. Okay, but there are plenty for everybody to have one. Good to see all of you this morning. Thank you for coming to this meeting. Uh, we're going to begin with prayer. Vamos a comenzar con una oración, okay? So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, out of love for the world, out of love for men and women, you sent your only Son to be like us in all things but sin to die for us, to save us from the power of death, and by his resurrection, to destroy the power of death forever and give us a share in your life. When he ascended to your right hand, O Father, he then sent his spirit to be his presence among his followers forever, to instruct them in his ways, to strengthen them, to give witness to his teaching and to fill them more fully with the life that you share with him. Help these young people as they prepare for the sacrament of confirmation, that they may desire the great gift of your spirit in its fullness, that they may grow in love of your son, and that they may come to understand their dignity as your adopted sons and daughters. For we pray these things in Christ's name, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. So I hope that all of you signed in. Come in and find a seat anywhere on the ends here. So every student who attends today, cada estudiante tiene que escribir su nombre. Everybody needs to sign in today to make sure we know that you are here. The first and most important announcement is that the date of confirmation has changed. And I think Emily sent that to you by way of text message and also email. Nosotros cambiamos la fecha de confirmación. The reason it changed is because initially, because of the two classes now, confirmation two, the 10th graders, and confirmation one in every parish, Archbishop Coakley did not think he could go twice to every parish to confirm but he is able to do that. So instead of me confirming on the first, we have a better celebration with him on the 20th, okay? So la fecha de confirmación es 20 de mayo, 20th of May, that's a Thursday night at six o'clock, a las seis aquí. So six o'clock, Thursday, May 20th. If for some reason that that will not work for you to be confirmed, then you need to talk to Emily Clark, okay? Text her, talk to her, and she'll find another solution. So, la fecha de confirmación es 20, 20 de mayo, jueves a las seis en la tarde, okay? And when I talk to the Archbishop, he's very excited. He wants to come to be with you and to celebrate this confirmation. So we'll need to practice before the 20th of May so you will know what to do, okay? So we don't have that date set yet, but we will let you know by text message 
uh, when that will be. No tenemos la fecha por la práctica de confirmación, pero algunos días antes de 20 de mayo vamos a tener eso. Okay? So, you confirmation one students are very lucky. You know why, right? Does anybody know why you're very lucky? <laughs> Jason knows. Every student before you for the past 15 years or so has had two years they've had to go. Two years. You just have to go one year, okay? Why is that? Because next year we're going to start confirming in sixth grade. It's a big change. So we want to be sure and capture you while you're here and get you confirmed. Capture you in a good sense, okay? That you receive the sacrament. Otherwise, next year we'd have a lot of confirmation. So, one year. But because of that, you have some things you have to get done right away. Baptismal certificate. We need a copy of that, okay? If we don't have it, we can't confirm you, okay? Necesitamos un copia de certificado de baptismo de su niño, de su hijo o hija, okay? Very important. The second thing we need is a name of a sponsor, okay? Un padrino, una madrina, somebody to sponsor you. And with that, if they, when you leave today, if you have not yet filled out the sponsor sheet, you'll see a sheet, I saw it, just a second here, okay? On the table out there, one side English, the other side Spanish, okay? If your sponsor is not from this parish, their pastor needs to fill out the bottom part of this, okay? Saying that they can be a sponsor. So es muy importante para llenar eso, especialmente para recibir el permiso de parco de otra parroquia de un madrino, madrina o un padrino, okay? So, the requirements for a sponsor, los requisitos por un padrino, they are, you have to be 18 years of age. You can't be 17, you can't be 16. You have to be 18 or above, okay? They could be 120, they're still living, okay? But they have to be 18. Necesita tener 18 años, los padrinos de confirmación, okay? The second thing is, they have had to receive baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation, okay? Those three sacraments make you a full member of the church. And that's what you will be when you're confirmed, a full member of the church, okay? So if they've not been confirmed, they can't be your godparent, your sponsor, okay? So los padrinos tienen que han recibido baptismo, primer comunión y confirmación. If they are married, they have to be married in the church, okay? The sacrament of marriage is so important to the life of the church and the world that it needs to be received by every couple who wants to be a sponsor, okay? So esto es muy importante. Los padrinos de confirmación, si están casados civiles, no pueden servir como padrinos. Si ellos necesitan recibir el sacramento de matrimonio para servir como padrino, okay? They need to be married. The other thing is, they need to be actively practicing their faith. So if you have an uncle who lives, for example, in New York State, like I do, if he never goes to church, if he never practices his faith, he's not going to be a good sponsor, okay? Need someone who goes to church, who knows their faith, and can support you in your walk of faith. So otro requisito es los padrinos necesitan estar practicando su fe. Si ellos no están participando en su fe, ellos no van a servir como padrinos buenos, okay? And the final thing is, the sponsor can't be your parent, okay? <laughs> I think that's a really good rule. <laughs> the sponsor cannot be your parent. El padrino de confirmación no puede ser su madre o su padre. No, okay? No puede hacer eso. Do you have any questions about the sponsors? Because this is really important. Preguntas acerca de los padrinos de confirmación. Ask me now, okay? Please. Preguntas, questions about sponsors. Yes. Really good question. Really good question. So your sponsor cannot be here on the 20th of May, but they can still be your confirmation sponsor. 
That's when, and I don't know if it's on this list here, it's on our baptismal sponsor list. You'll just need to write probably on the top, proxy, the word proxy means you have someone stand in for the sponsor, okay? Someone stand in, needs to be a Catholic, someone coming to church that can stand in for the sponsor, okay? But the sponsor that you choose when they have a proxy will always be your confirmation sponsor. They'll be on the sacramental record. They'll be on your certificate. So, si tiene un padrino de confirmación o padrinos que viven en México y no pueden estar aquí 20 de mayo. Necesiten buscar otra persona católica que puede estar aquí en nombre de ellos para servir en esta parte en la celebración de confirmación. Okay? Es claro, es, es claro de eso. Do you understand? Everybody understand that? Okay. It's very important to understand. Good question. Thank you. Other questions about the sponsors? Otros preguntas acerca de los padrinos? It's very well. It's it's very important. It's actually essential that they're able to be here for the practice, and we'll let you know when the practice is. Okay, so they can know where to go and what to do. For some reason, they can't make the practice. We'll need a parent here to stand in for the sponsor when they get here Thursday to tell the sponsor what to do, okay? Si su padrino no puede estar aquí por la práctica algunos días antes de la confirmación, su padre, su madre tienen que venir aquí para decir después al padrino necesita hacer eso, okay? All right. Anything else on the sponsors? So if you haven't filled it out yet, these are on the table when you leave the sponsor sheet. Okay? So what are the two things that you need that if you haven't got them yet, that you need? Can you remember what I said? One is a baptismal certificate, copy of it, okay? And the other is your sponsor and they need to have the form filled out, okay? The third thing is a saint's name. Nombre de un santo, okay? And this, this is very important as well, okay? Because when you are confirmed, you need the help, not just of your sponsor, not just of your parents, not just of the church, but also the help of a particular person who is in heaven, who wants to walk with you the rest of your life, wants to help you the rest of your life. So it's very important to choose someone who you feel like you can connect with, okay? All right, my confirmation saint is Andres, Andrew, okay? It's also the name of my father, Andrew. Uh, the apostle who brought to Peter, Peter to Jesus. Actually, he was the apostle who was crucified upside down because he didn't feel worthy to be crucified right side up. But one who was very close to Jesus, very close to Jesus. So he's still with me today, helping me on my journey of faith. So es importante para buscar un santo por su confirmación. And este santo es una persona que puede ayudar usted en su jornada de fe por toda su vida, okay? All right? So, and after this meeting, Emily is going to text you all links to where you can find more information about saints, okay? All right? And this is where your sponsor and your parents come in handy. You can talk to them. Talk to me about the saints that you like, why they're important, okay? So, Es importante para buscar un santo por los padrinos y padres ayudar sus estudiantes para buscar un santo. Necesitamos este antes de la celebración de confirmación. Okay? All right. So, baptismal certificate, sponsor, saint's name. Need all those three. And when do you need them? You may ask me, Father, when do we need them? Did anybody ask that? <laughs> By the 1st of April, okay? 1st of April, two months. You have two months. You have all of February, all of March. Necesitamos esta información, certificado de baptismo, de padrino y de santo, el primer día de abril, 1st of April, okay? 1st of April. Okay, now since you haven't, since you haven't had a chance to come to
class. I know you've been doing that online. I want to review some very important things with you about confirmation. Cosas importantes cerca de este sacramento de confirmación. Okay? So, who is the third person of the Holy Trinity? Who's the third person of the Holy Trinity? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit, okay? So you and I, as Christians, believe in a God who is a communion of persons. Not in a God who is solo, out there, far, far away, just all by himself, but a God who at his very essence is a communion of persons. The Father loving the Son always. The Son loving the Father in return. And the Holy Spirit, the fire of love that unites them. Okay? So we believe in three persons. They are made of the same essence, each of them. Divine essence as God. But they are different in the sense that they, are, they have different roles to play. The Father who calls us to be his children in baptism. The Son who shows us the love of God and is a brother to us in all things. And the Spirit who fills us and strengthens us to do what God calls us to do. To know what God calls us to do. To receive the gifts of God. Okay, So the Holy Spirit... You're going to receive the Holy Spirit in a fresh and powerful way in confirmation. La tercera persona de la Santísima Trinidad, el Espíritu Santo. When you come to Mass every Sunday, the Holy Spirit is at work here at Mass in many ways, but especially at the time when the bread and wine are prayed over by the priest. Father Jacoby cannot change bread into the body of Christ. That's beyond what Father Jacoby can do, okay? Only the Holy Spirit can do that. So listen to the words that the priest says over the bread and wine. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body of and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit that changes bread and wine into a heavenly gift, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It's also the Holy Spirit that makes us one, even though we're so different from each other. Not just different languages, not just men and women different from each other, not just looking different, but different in so many ways but the Holy Spirit makes us one. Listen to this. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. One people, one body of Christ by the Holy Spirit. Es muy importante para entender que el Espíritu Santo convierten pan y vino al cuerpo y sangre de Cristo. El Espíritu Santo está trabajando en cada misa. Y está trabajando también para unirnos nosotros diferentes en un cuerpo, el cuerpo de Cristo Jesús. Okay? The Holy Spirit also is the, the person of the Trinity who helps us to pray. Okay? St. Paul says it this way. He says, through the gift of the Spirit, we're able to call God Abba, Father. Abba is a Hebrew Aramaic word that is like our word daddy or papa. It's a, it's a term of tenderness. It's like what a little child does when she runs and jumps into her human father's lap and turns to him and says, Abba, will you help me with this? Will you give me this? Will you do this for me? It is a term of endearment and love and trust. The Spirit helps us to go to God the Father with this kind of trust and this kind of tender love. This kind of tender love. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray. In fact, St. Paul says elsewhere, he says, when we don't know what to say, when we don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit helps us 
with inutterable groanings to speak to God. Speak to God. So, if you have trouble praying, if it's a difficulty for you, the Spirit is meant to help you to pray, to help all of us to pray in a very special way. Help all of us to pray. That gift of the Spirit. In fact, we're here today because of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit. So, now the Son of God, Jesus the Christ, is brilliant. (laughs) He's the Son of God, right? (laughs) So, think about it. When he told his followers to remember him, to gather together to remember him, what did he tell them to do? He told them to eat and to drink. Eat this bread. This is my body. Drink this blood. This is my cup. This is my blood, rather. This is my blood. What do we humans do all the time? (laughs) At least three times a day. And if you're a teenager, you probably do it more. We eat and we drink, all right? This is what we do to remember him, the very basic thing that we do. And he comes to us to fill us with divine life as we do so. But even more so, he's brilliant in this way. When Jesus walked the earth, he walked the earth in a human body just like mine, just like yours. He could only be present to a few people at a time. He could only reach out and touch people and heal them a few people at a time. Because he was limited, as we are, by these bodies. So when he ascends to heaven, where he lives forever to intercede for us, to pray for us, He sent His Spirit to be His presence on this earth and the Spirit cannot be contained. The Spirit of God can dwell in Lynn and Jaden right here as well as in me. The Spirit of God can come to you and fill you with divine life and give you strength to do God's work. It cannot be contained. It is the way He is present to all of us and gives us all power and strength to do what he asked. So Espíritu Santo es el regalo de Cristo Jesús resucitado. Él está allá a la derecha del Padre. Es el regalo a nosotros, todos nosotros, para tener la presencia y poder de Cristo y para continuar su trabajo. So the Spirit works in our lives in very specific ways. And I handed this out to you So if you turn to the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. Okay. Los siete regalos del Espíritu Santo. So this is very important, muy importante. When you are confirmed, These gifts of the Spirit are given to you. But like any gift, if they're not used, they are no good. Someone gives you a gift for Christmas, a beautiful gift. You don't even open it. You put it aside, you forget it. It never ever helps you in this life. These gifts are meant to be used by those of us who are confirmed to do the work of Jesus Christ. So I put on there, on the left side in English, on the right side in Spanish, look at the first one, wisdom, sabiduría, okay? El regalo del Espíritu Santo. I think this one is listed first in the catechism because it is really important. Este regalo es muy importante. Why is it importante? Why is it? (laughs) I'm doing Spanglish, sorry. Why is it important? Because all of us need wisdom to know what God wants us to do. Okay? People sometimes come to me and ask, what what is it that God wants me to do? Not just with my life, but today. The gift of wisdom, this gift of the Spirit, is meant to enlighten us, to show us this is where you are to go. This is what you are to say. This is what you should do. God wants to help us through His Spirit to know. He just doesn't sit up there in heaven laughing at us, going, oh, they're dumb, they're humans, they don't know what to do. No! He sends the Spirit of God with this gift so we might know by wisdom this is His will. 
Este regalo de sabiduría, ayúdanos para cumplir la voluntad de Dios cada día de nuestra vida. So, I would encourage you confirmation students, when you wake up in the morning and you're laying there in bed and you hit the snooze on your phone over and over, before you crawl out of bed, as you lay there, just say this prayer. Heavenly Father, help me to know what to do today. Help me to know what I should do today. And ask for this gift, the gift of wisdom. By your wisdom, show me. And know that the fullness of that gift will be given you in confirmation to unwrap, to use every day of your life. But it's one thing to know what to do. It's another thing to do it. <laughs> es importante para saber qué es la voluntad de Dios para mí de este día para hacer. Ah, es más difícil. So, That's why there's another gift on this list. It's down there number four. It's called fortitude, all right? Or courage, it's another name for it. Fortaleza, all right? So when I pray in the morning every day, I don't only ask God, by your spirit, show me, by the gift of wisdom, what to do. I ask God to give me the strength to do it. Give me the gift of fortitude, this courage to do it. It's one thing to know that in this encounter with someone that I'm called to speak some words to lift them up or perhaps to calm them down because they're angry or hurting. It's another thing to actually do it. But the Spirit wants to help us by the gift of fortitude to do that. And that's not just in the everyday life. But you know, if you are called to marriage, Give me the strength this day, Lord, to love my husband, to love my wife by this gift of fortitude, all right? If you're called to be a priest, by this gift of fortitude, Holy Spirit, strengthen me to do what I am called to do as a priest, all right? So, este regalo de fortaleza es muy importante. Y con el regalo de sabiduría, nosotros podamos entender la voluntad de Dios y cumplir, cumplir la voluntad de Dios. So, I'm not going to go over all of these regalos, all these gifts, but one other one that I want to touch on, because I think it's very important, it's number seven, al siete, temor de Dios. Fear of the Lord is the ancient term. Awe and wonder is a more kind of, I think, more practical term for us today. Fear of the Lord in Scripture basically means this. I know who I am. I know who God is. I know that my life doesn't come from me. I know that God's the giver of life. I know that I don't control the world. God is the one who's in control. I know that I didn't make all the beauty of the earth. God did. It's the knowledge of who we are as humans and who God is as God. That's what fear of the Lord is. And what it leads us to is this awe and wonder. Awe and wonder. If you ever are outside in the evening in Oklahoma, especially here in Mustang, and you look to the west, the sunsets here are glorious. They're just glorious. Partly because there's so much dust, <laughs> so much dust in Oklahoma. There's plenty of ways for the light to play and to cause colors, all right? But you just stop for a second, running, running every day, or maybe looking at your phone every minute, every day, just stop and look and go, wow, God, you did a good thing. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Or if your little baby brother is born and your mom brings him home and you actually get to hold him and you look at him and go, amazing. This kid was in my mom's belly? <laughs> this It's amazing, this gift of life. Awe and wonder, awe and wonder. Or when you go to a concert and you hear one of your friends get up and sing, and you're like, oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Awe and wonder. This gift stirs up in our heart this ability 
to see every day the gifts of God at work and creation and other people, even in our own lives, and to go, thank you. Thank you for this gift. Just kind of wakes us up because I don't know about you, but I get so busy every day that sometimes I never stop to be filled with awe and wonder at all that God has done. So este regalo de temor de Dios puede abrir nuestros ojos a los regalos de Dios en nuestra vida cada día. Los regalos de otras personas, la belleza de la creación. Okay? So seven gifts that you will receive at confirmation. They're meant to be used. God gives them to you through the Spirit to use them. On the other side, nueve frutos, the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So somebody asked me one time, they said, okay, Father, so the Holy Spirit is a spirit, right? So how do you see the spirit? I mean, how do you see spirit? It's not made of material, right? It's not solid. How do you see where the spirit is? This is where you see where the spirit is and the fruits. If you go out and you go to an apple tree, I was just in... Uh, Florida. I was actually near a lemon tree. And I go out and I pick a lemon off a tree. This lemon shows me what this tree is. <laughs> it's a lemon tree, all right? Pecans. You go and pick pecans off the pecan tree, shake them off. This fruit shows what it is. These show the tree, the very life of where these, these fruits come from. They come from the Holy Spirit. So, if you see someone who can love, who can love when it's hard to love. And you step back and go, the Spirit's there at work in that person's life. I can see it. This person who loves and takes care of their sick mother or father, whose devotion to them is tireless and cares for them, the Spirit's working there, the sign of love. Or you see someone who's lleno de alegría, who's full of joy, even during a time when there's so much sadness. And I'm not talking about happiness here where someone walks around and smiling. I'm talking about someone who has this deep abiding sense of God's presence so they can go through a time of sadness and they can bring joy into the world. That's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is working in that person's life. The next gift, pas, peace. Yeah, this is such an important fruit, right? Because when you talk about so much conflict today and division today, to see someone who's able to bring peace, especially to disagreements, especially to people who are at each other's throats. Este regalo de pas, muy, es, no es un regalo, es un fruto. It's a fruto del Espíritu Santo, it's a fruit of the Spirit. This next fruit, I can tell you for me, it's one of the hardest fruits for me to live, okay? To allow this spirit to work in me, to give me this patience. Uh, because my mom has always told me, Joe, you always want things done right away. <laughs> Said to have patience and to trust in God's plan. To have patience and to trust that God is at work even when you don't see God at work. It's like the patience of a farmer who plants a seed, una semilla, in the earth, in la tierra, and waits for the spring rains, and waits for the sun, and waits for that seed to push forth from the earth, and then to bear fruit. This is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Those who can be patient and trust in God's enduring plan. The next fruit of the Holy Spirit, a fidelidad, kindness, kindness. I don't know about you, but it seems like the last few years, there has been a growth, not in kindness, but in meanness. People being mean to each other, saying hurtful things, hateful things about each other. And not just in person, but online where you can get away with that stuff because no one's right there to see you and hold you account for it. 
To be kind in a cruel world, that's where the Spirit is working. To be kind in a cruel world, that is evidence of the fruit of the Spirit. Generosity. This fruit, um, very important in the United States. Bondad or generosidad. Este fruto es muy importante. Why is that? Because in our culture, in the country of the United States, too often the messages we hear is that the one with the most toys, the one who has the most toys, is the winner. The one who has the most stuff, the most money, is the one who has won. But that's not true. Actually, the one who is able to share what they have with others is the one who is really full of joy and love and peace. The one who's generous not just with their dinero, not just with their money, but with their time and with their gifts for others. This one is really full of the Spirit. Anytime I see someone who's generous, in whatever way, I sit back and I go, el Espíritu Santo está trabajando en esta persona. The Spirit of God is working in this person's life, especially in a culture where we're encouraged not to be generous, but hold on tight to whatever you got and get more of it. Hold on to it. No. The Spirit of God teaches us the more we are generous, the more we receive. The more we give away of our life, the fuller our life is. This is an important fruit. Faithfulness, fidelidad, Hopefully, you young people, as you are confirmed, and you act on the gifts of the Spirit, especially wisdom and fortitude, you can remain faithful to your commitment to Jesus Christ. You can remain faithful to your promise to live out your faith in the church. This, this fruit is a powerful fruit. Sunday after Sunday to come and receive the body of Christ. Sunday after Sunday to be present to your brothers and sisters and support them in their walk. Faithfulness, very important fruit. Gentleness, ah, in a world where strength is valued and where violence seems to be having its way to be gentle with one another. Mansedumbre, un fruto muy importante. And finally, the last fruit, self-control. When you see someone who instead of gorging themselves on food or on other things, you see someone who's able to hold their tongue when someone else says something bad about them and they're tempted to respond with hateful words. When you see someone who has a girlfriend or a boyfriend and they're tempted to go all the way with that person and they don't, it's the fruit of the Spirit, self-control, self-control. Very important sign of the Spirit at work, okay? All right. Father Jacoby is preaching too much now, so I can tell. I'll, I'll step back a little bit. These are very important, gifts and fruits, regalos y frutos. So I'd like to invite you students, put this somewhere in your bedroom, tape it up somewhere, put it somewhere where you can see it. You might have it on one side for one week for the gifts, and the other side for the next week for the fruits, and pray about them. Talk to God about these gifts and fruits. Very important for your confirmation. Okay. I forgot one thing. I'll be right back. Be right back.
Okay, this is a pop quiz. Does, does anybody here know what the 17th day of February is? The SEC update of February? Someone said it. Ash Wednesday? Yes, Ash Wednesday. Miraculous de Cenizas. The SEC update of February. So 17 days from now, we enter into Lent. So what I want to encourage you students for confirmation to do, and this is on the table as well as when you leave, is we have what we call rice bowls, okay? We have these para, this plato de arroz, okay, to use during Lent. You don't have to take a retreat this year because of the pandemic. Normally you'd be going on a retreat, okay? Taking at least a day, usually two days to retreat. You don't have to do service hours this year because of the pandemic, all right? Normally you'd be doing service hours as well. So this is just one thing you can do to enter into prayer and service during Lent for your preparation for your confirmation. And the way it works, for those of you who have not done it before, you take out the little booklet on the inside. If Father Jacoby can get it out of there. There we go. Okay. So there's a Lenten calendar in here. And it gives you prayers and opportunities to think of different people and things to do during Lent. But it also encourages you once a week to have a simple meal. Instead of having a big meal in an evening, just to have a bowl of soup and a sandwich or something. And whatever money you save from that meal, to put it in this box. This is one of those talents that I did not receive as a kid. You make this into a little box, okay? And you put the money in here, and then at the end of Lent, you bring it and give it to the church, and we send it to Catholic Relief Services, which works in every corner of the world to help feed the hungry and help the poor of the world, okay? So what you do is you pray, you fast, you give up a little food once a week, and you give alms, you give gifts for the poor. Those are the three practices of Lent. Ayuno, oración, y limosna. Está culminado en esta práctica de plato de arroz, okay? So, again, I just encourage you students for first confirmation, who will be confirmed, take one of these, involve your parents in the prayer, and in the reflection and in the collection of some money every week to help the poor of the world, okay? So that'll be your Lenten practice. The other thing that's really important, I understand that during a pandemic, and the bishop understands this as well, that we can't command people to come to church. I understand that, okay? But I also understand that you're here today. <laughs> Thanks be to God you're here today. I also understand that you're doing lots of other things out there in the world as well. The most important thing for us as Catholics is to come to church to receive the gift of Holy Communion, to be in communion with God and with one another. If someone told you you're on the moon and you don't know anything about life on earth, that there's this thing on earth they do where people come together and God gives them a share in his life to strengthen them, to fill them with his love. You're like, I want some of that. <laughs> well, every day in the Catholic Church, daily Mass, every day in the Catholic Church, you can receive the gift of, the, of Holy Communion, of the Lord's own body joined to yours, strengthening you by his love and life. Why would you not want to receive that? Why would you not want to receive that? That's why these, these gifts of the Spirit are so important to strengthen us to come to church and receive the Lord's body and blood. In a normal year, if you weren't coming to church regularly and you wanted to be confirmed, we'd probably say, you might want to think about postponing because obviously your faith's not that important to you. This year, we're not going to do that. Not going to do that. But all I can say to you as your pastor is I encourage you to find a way to get to church, to pray with your brothers and sisters, to receive Holy Communion. And it doesn't have to be on Sunday. Cada martes, every Tuesday, we have Mass in Spanish at 6.30 in the evening. Cada martes en español a las seis y media en la tarde, misa en español. Every, every miraculous, every Wednesday, 
At 6.15, we have Mass in here. In fact, if you come to daily Mass, you get a little bonus, right? It only lasts 30 minutes. <laughs> it doesn't last an hour, all right? It only lasts 30 minutes. 30 minutos por misa durante la semana, okay? But ideally, you would come to Mass on Saturday night or Sunday. It's 5 o'clock Saturday, 9.30 Sunday morning, Misa en Español, 12, 15, cada domingo, okay? Just really important. I encourage you as you prepare for confirmation, which is February, March, three and a half months away, to renew your commitment to practice your faith, okay? Renew your commitment to practice your faith. Muy importante por los padres y sus hijos que van a recibir confirmación para hacer un compromiso para ir a misa regularmente, regularmente, okay? And the final thing is, make time to go to the sacrament of confession, reconciliation, before you're confirmed. Okay, every Saturday, 3.30 to 4.30, I hear confessions here. Every first Tuesday and first Wednesday of the month, I hear confessions after Mass at 7 o'clock on Tuesday and Wednesday evenings. Es muy importante para los estudiantes de confirmación para celebrar confesión, para recibir perdón por sus pecados. Cada sábado es tres y media, cuatro y media, aquí. Cada martes, no, no, no cada martes, primer, primer, primer martes de cada mes a las siete de la tarde y primer miércoles de cada mes a las siete de la tarde. Okay, so it's important to come to the sacrament before you are confirmed. All right, any questions before we are finished? You have preguntas, preguntas acerca de cualquier cosa. Questions about anything? Okay. All right. So I'm letting you out a little early, okay? We're supposed to go to 11.45, but you're getting out a little early. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Dios Todopoderoso, te damos gracias por todos los regalos, especialmente el regalo del Espíritu Santo. For we are so grateful, Lord God, that through your Son and with your Son you have given us a share in your Holy Spirit. Strengthen these students as they prepare to receive the fullness of your Spirit and confirmation. May their parents and godparents be shining examples of faith to them. May all of us grow in love of you and one another. For we ask all these things through Christ our Lord, for the blessing of God. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Spirit. Santo. Amen. Okay, as you leave today, be sure to pick up your rice bowl on the table out there, and also if you need the confirmation form out there. And if you didn't sign in, be sure to sign in. Thank you. It's great to see you. Vaya con Dios. Go with God.